Morton. As they go under brakes at the end. And now line up for the run under the bridge. Brock just drops the right hand rear off into the dirt. Moffat gets a little bit closer. Now he gets an opportunity to side by side, but there's not too much room there as they settle back down to the racing line for this very tight right hander. Possibly the slowest Moffat corner trying. of the circuit. He can take such a more economical line through that slow corner using all the g-forces that this little Mazda can muster and any time it seems he can just steer in tighter and use less of the track than Peter Brock and still stay with Brock. Here comes Moffat. Not over the dog leg. Oh! Unbelievable. You have never seen that happen before when a passing manoeuvre can happen right on the dog leg from Alan Moffat. Peter Brock would have to be demoralised. And a big blow up from someone down here. There's someone pulled to the infield there, so he's been wise enough to get right off the track. And, and at the end of this race, Undoubtedly, no matter who wins, major controversy is going to surround Oran Park this afternoon because exclusively to the ABC, the Confederation of Australian Motorsport has just announced rule changes for all these cars to apply from August 1st when the first round of the Australian Endurance Championship commences at Amaru Park in the Amaru 300. And it's good news, but for some of the drivers, mainly bad news. Firstly, Peter Brock has his bigger wheels. At the moment, he must drive on 10-inch rims. He says that it doesn't give him the opportunity to use the right sort of tyres to put his power to the ground to stay with Alan Moffat, and we're seeing that right now. Moffat has to stay with his current 10-inch wheels. Brock gets his 12s. So do the BMWs, so does every other Commodore. So for that, Peter Brock should be happy. The Falcons, the Camaros, and the Jaguars all get the ability to use 12 inch wheels again using a bag size of up to 16 inches that takes into account the tire on the rim as well but for all practical purposes the tires the, the wheel size as well will be 12 inches so all the bigger cars get their bigger wheels now for the individual cars dick johnson gets half of what he asks for he gets his new inlet manifold. He also asked for bigger valves. The bigger valves and the inlet manifold together would have given him an extra 30 horsepower. Dick Johnson can at least be happy about that because he says that his straight line capabilities aren't as good as the Commodore's and he wants the extra power simply to be able to stay with the Commodore's in the straight line. So for uh, Dick Johnson, extra power. For the Nissan Bluebird Turbo, bad news. They go into the over three litre class and therefore sacrifice points. At the moment, George Fury, right there in car 55, is running in the under three litre class and picks up extra points in the Australian Touring Car Championship. He's now been reclassified because of his turbocharger as an outright contender. For the BMW 635, CSI, a return to motor racing, now allowed a 24 valve cylinder head Peter Williamson will be happy because Toyota Celicas are also allowed that, and that means that in the James Hardy 1000, the Castrol 400, the endurance races this year, we'll see Jim Richards return to racing in the BMW, which should now be competitive. The news that Peter Brock and the Falcons have been dreading and which Alan Moffat has been looking forward to. He gets 30 extra horsepower, his 13B engine replacing his current 12A engine, and that means that at Bathurst this year especially, the big race in Australian touring car racing, Alan Moffat has the engine which could well make him competitive, if not dominant, with the, uh, the V8 cars. Now, the cams have also made a couple of other announcements. You may notice we have announced absolutely nothing about Peter Brock other than the fact he gets bigger wheels. He does not get his bigger, uh, bigger brakes, he does not get his new, his, his new aerodynamics, but Cam say, despite what Peter has told us, that he didn't ask for them. He does have the ability to, re to apply uh, 
for a quarterly hearing of Cam, which occurs in the middle of July, so he could still get his modifications for the major touring car races later this year. But the big announcement from CAMS, apart from those changes, is that they will be watching all the races closely. And should one car or another have an advantage more than CAMS reckons is fair from the, uh, the new rules that have been allowed, CAMS will apply a weight limit immediately to that motor car to negate an unfair advantage. But undoubtedly, at the end of this race today, there will be major controversy in the pits and Peter Brock will be one of those most upset. Back to the race. Alan Grice with George Fury right on his tail. And Moffat has recorded a time of 1 minute 16 seconds. 2.4 seconds uh, quicker than Dick Johnson's existing lap. Should I say 1.4 seconds quicker than Johnson's existing lap record. Gap from first to second is 1.6 seconds. Second to third, 4.1. There's Gary Wilmington in the XD Falcon, a car that he built up from a wreck three years ago and which is returning to its natural state at this stage, heading for the pits. And as we wait for the end of this race and the driver's comments, we spoke before the race started to John Large, the president of the Confederation of Australian Motorsport, who outlined the rule changes and the significance for CAMS. no doubt there'll be some heated discussion and some philosophical discussions about these changes over the next few weeks and right through the year of motorsport and the obvious question for you John is how do you feel they're going to affect the sport for Australia? Well Bob no responsible legislator ever makes uh, decisions involving changes without at least feeling some concern as to what the outcome of those changes might mean in practice. However, I'm very heartened by the fact that uh, there's been an extremely extensive amount of research going into this. We've had a very wide range of expert opinion and it's significant, I think, that our own experts are finding it very difficult to determine which car might emerge in what position of advantage from all of this. I think the initial reaction by most people will be that the Mazda has done very well. Uh, my personal view is that the BMW 635 may very well prove to be the sleeper. The Falcon uh, has an opportunity to uh, uh, do some suspension work and again that's a car which one or two of the experts have said is probably going to do much, much better as a result of these changes. That'll be good because both the Falcon and the BMW have been midfielders for a while and uh, certainly if they come up to the front as well that's only going to make a good scene that much better. So the main reason behind it all was to bring the racing closer together? Yes, certainly CAMS hasn't in any way set out to do anything that's going to alter the positions of finishers. Uh, it's our objective to just redress some of the imbalances that have worked themselves into the system over the last two or three years of this formula and bring the cars closer together, as I say, so that we can get a good scene and make it even better. Well, it's certainly not bad at the moment, is it, as Alan Moffat leads Peter Brock and then the fantastic dice between Alan Grice here and George Fury for third position. 